Today we are going to talk about hereditary spherocytosis. This is an inherited disorder of red blood cells. Hereditary sphero, spherocytosis. Right? In this inherited disease, red blood cells become spherical. You know normally red blood cells are biconcave disc. Is that right? Normally red blood cells are biconcave disc like this. Right? There is hemoglobin and this biconcave disc is highly flexible. But in this disease red blood cells in the blood become spherical. So biconcave disc of red blood cell conferred, convert into spheroids, right? Now we will see why this problem occur, why the red blood cells become spherical and if red blood cells become spherical, what are the problems in your body, right? What are the complications? Now to really understand red blood cells, that they, why they become spherical, we have to understand that what is the normal cytoskeleton of red blood cell, right? Let me draw one red blood cell and its membrane into detail. Suppose here is a, a large diagram of a red blood cell. All of you know that in a normal red blood cell, volume is less and surface is more. That is why it is biconcave. Volume is less and cell membrane surface area is more and due to that reason red blood cells are normally biconcave. Right? Now advantage of having the red blood cells biconcave disc is that they are flexible. They are flexible and normal red blood cell with biconcave shape can pass through very narrow part of circulation by twisting and turning and squeezing through. Is that right? Am I clear to everyone? But there is one problem that when red blood cells pass through the narrow part of capillary system, some of the capillaries in the body are just 3 micron, very small size and some capillaries in the spleen are just 2 microns, right? And red blood cells are 7 to 8 microns. Let me repeat it. Red blood cells size is 7 to 8 microns and some of the capillaries are very narrow up to 2 to 3 microns. Especially in spleen, the capillaries in cords of Billroth, they are very narrow. So red blood cells pass through those capillaries by bending on themselves squeezing through. But there is one problem. This membrane of the red blood cell, right, it is tightly held with its volume. This is very important to understand. When red blood cells are twisting and turning through capillaries, you can imagine a red blood cell is like a young lady, normal red blood cell, like a young lady, very flexible, very smart at the waist, but who is right now married and her dress is very large. Volume is less and surface is more. This is what a normal healthy red blood cell is. And when a healthy red blood cell or this young bride, when she has to pass through very narrow tunnels, she has to keep her dress with herself. There should be some mechanism that when young bride properly dressed with very big surface area, when she is passing through the tunnels, she should keep her dress with herself. Is that right? And she should have some mechanism that if her dress or surface area or membrane is stuck with something, she should pull it and hold it with itself because it is not good 
That young bride passes through some narrow passages and loses her dress. Is it good? It's not good, obviously, isn't it? Now, red blood cell, like a young bride with extra surface area, has special mechanisms, special elastics to hold the dress with itself. Normal red blood cell. Now we will talk about what are those elastic things? What are those special things within the red blood cell which hold the membrane of red blood cell which is extra membrane with the substance of red blood cell? Actually, there is a system of special proteins just under the surface of red cell membrane, right? These are special elastic things which hold the membrane with the substance of RBC. The very important component of this are, number one, these are the proteins located. This is one peptide chain, this is another peptide chain. Now, this peptide chain is called spectrin. What is it called? Spectrin. spectrin. Let me draw it again. This is spectrin. Now, there are two molecules of spectrin which are twisted with each other and this become a dimer of spectrin, double unit of spectrin and this double unit of spectrin have some relation with another double unit of spectrin. So it means there's one dimer here, there's another dimer here, and their heads are attached with each other, and the whole structure become tetramer. It becomes tetramer. So this is the basic structure of spectrin molecules, which are protein molecules, which are just under the membrane of red blood cells. And they are horizontally arranged under the membrane. Is that right? Now, again, there is another tetramer here, And of course, the structure is present throughout the, yes, under surface of the membrane of red blood cell. Now, the spectrin network, which makes initially dimers, and two dimers are attached with each other at the head points and making a tetramer and this is one tetramer from here up to here this is another tetramer up to here now these are the tail ends of the tetramer this is a tail and this is a tail is that right these tail ends are attached with each other with a protein actins actins so we can say again here will be also yes actins so we can say under the surface of the red blood cell membrane, if this is the red blood cell membrane surface, under it, there is spectrin network and tails of the spectrin networks are held together by actins. This is whole network under it. Now, with another vertical set of proteins, this network hold tightly on the membrane. How? Actually, there is another protein here which is called N-chirin. N-chirin. Right? Now, this N-chirin is vertically attached with another set of protein 4.2. Okay, this protein is just called 4.2. And at the top, there is a special channel and this channel is made of a protein which is called protein 3, band 3, band 3 protein. Now, don't get confused and don't get impressed by this knowledge. It's very simple. It's just like this horizontal proteins supporting the membrane 
and holding the membrane through the vertical proteins. That's it. The horizontal protein network, right? Under the membrane and anchored with the membrane with the vertical set of proteins. Is that right? Then another set which is vertically holding this together is 4.1 and glycophorins. Here is suppose 4.1 protein and here is glycophorins. Now if you look at these proteins these are the vertical arrangement of proteins. Am I clear? So what is happening? You remember I told you about the young bride which is having lot of extra dress but the elastics which are holding the dress with her so that when she twists and turns and passes through the tunnels her dress should not be left here and there. Similarly in red blood cells membrane they are held tightly with the cytosol or structure of the membrane structure of the cell how there are horizontal protein network attached holding the membrane through vertical protein networks now these networks are very important because if this protein structure is not healthy right this whole protein structure is also called cytoskeleton of red cell membrane another name for whole this complex of protein is called cytoskeleton it's the skeleton of the cell membranes of red blood cells now if these proteins are supposed mutant of course these proteins are formation of these proteins is directed by genes but red blood cell does not have gene so how these proteins are made in red blood cell carlos very good in erythroblast at the very early stage when red blood cells are being you know during erythropoiesis the early cells which are erythroblast and normoblast and normocyte of course those cells have genetic material and the genes in those cells are directing the synthesis of these proteins is that right if those genes are mutant and these proteins are not synthesized properly and these proteins are also mutant and if this cytoskeleton is not healthy for example if n carine protein is mutant either it is deficient or it is abnormal and it is unable to make appropriate vertical connections between the membrane and the spectrin network do you think membrane can be tightly held with the cell what will happen then again listen if cytoskeletal proteins are mutant and cytoskeleton of the red blood cell become abnormal and cytoskeleton cannot hold the membrane of the red blood cell with itself what will happen such rbcs such red blood cells when they will come out of bone marrow and they will passing through the circulatory system at the narrow point when they are trying to squeeze through a piece of membrane will be left behind and when red blood cells without the supportive skeleton are passing through the circulatory system at narrow points they shed up their membranes and progressively the progressive loss of the cell membrane changes the shape of the red blood cell just imagine your bride with a lot of extra dress but dress is not attached inside so when that bride which is having unsupported dress she will pass through narrow areas pieces of the dress will be lost in the end she will come out of those narrow tunnels she will come out and walk out elegantly or she will be like she will try to shrink into remaining dress and she will become something like spherical <laughs> you can imagine that's exactly what happened with the red blood cells is that right that red blood cells with weak cytoskeleton where membrane is not supported and held properly with the substance of the cell such red blood cells when they pass through circulation through the narrow points they tend to lose their membrane 
and surface area progressively become smaller and for a given volume for a given volume the smallest surface area is found in spherical shape so red blood cells eventually become spherical, spherical. and then we say that this hereditary defect in the genes producing the protein the cytoskeleton are leading to spherocytosis is that clear to everyone any question over here there is no question okay so now of course in red blood cell there is no nucleus but when red blood cells were under the process of erythropoiesis the nucleus was present in precursors of red blood cells and in that nucleus the genes may be mutant and mutant proteins are produced what is the most common what is the most common defect or mutation in spherocytosis let me repeat the question out of these proteins which is the most common protein which is mutated and resulting in spherocytosis yes carlos spectrin. write it down spectrin and put a big cross on it it is not true i will tell you that primary mutations in spectrin are not most common cause yes who will tell me let's suppose there are genes here this is a gene for spectrin right this is not the most commonly mutant who will tell me anyone Ankyrin, the most common 50% of the patient who have spherocytosis, they have defect in the gene related with Ankyrin. When Ankyrin gene is mutant, Ankyrins are not made. The primary defect is in Ankyrin. When Ankyrin is not there, can spectrin be held properly? No. And then spectrin remains free and catabolized rapidly and secondarily spectrin level goes down is that right so primary defect is most commonly seen in ankyrin about 50 percent of the patient ankyrin proteins are mutant and they are unable to hold the spectrin network and other cytoskeletal structures properly with the membrane and pieces of membrane when ankyrin is not there pieces of membrane remain unsupported and when they are not hooked properly, they remain unsupported, they tend to lose off. Second most common defect, I am not going to ask you all the defects, at least you should know first and the second most common defect. Yes, second most common defect is seen in about 20% of the patient in protein band protein number 3. So, actually, Actually, the mutations in vertical proteins are more common than the horizontal set of proteins. But when vertical proteins are deficient, right, the end result is same that if ankyrin is not there or band 3 protein is not there or 4.2 is mutant in some patient, then spectrin network will not be supported well and spectrin will be catabolized and spectrin load in a given red blood cell will become less that is why previously previously doctors thought that most of these patients have deficiency in spectrin but when they studied the genes of spectrin and synthesis of spectrin that was normal then later on they discovered the real problem is in vertical proteins which are deficient that is why in old edition they say primary problem is in spectrin the latest books are telling the primary problem most commonly is seen in ankyrin and band 3 and of course 70 percent patient include problem in ankyrin and ankyrin and band 3 remaining 30 percent patient may have some of them may have problem in spectrin others may have problem in some other proteins am i clear